All right, everybody, we have another marketing strategy session. And today I have a good friend of mine, Phil. He is on to talk about podcasting and how you can podcast for your business and uh, grow your business as well as grow your personal brand. Phil, thanks for coming on. Jeff, thank you so much for having me on. I can't wait to talk marketing strategies and all that fun stuff with how podcasting can help uh, business owners with their strategy and all that. Perfect. Now, now Phil's trying to show me up. As you can see, he has the podcasting equipment on. He has the good mic. He has the headsets. Myself, I'm just going like this for today. I do have a mic. It's not showing, but Phil, Phil has the radio voice and everything. So <laughs> we're going to get into it. How professional do you have to be in order to podcast? Honestly, you don't have to be professional at all. Um, it's more the authenticity uh, that that people want. Um, we're moving away from uber professionalism and you know you have this mask that you have to show because it's a business and it's very this is how business has to be very structured to being more authentic we want to learn more about personal brands we want to know who we're doing business with that's what we're seeing more and more today and that's why i think podcasting is the best thing for any level of business if you're starting a business to if you're a multi billion dollar corporation having a podcast is how you earn trust nowadays because I, I know a lot of people are talking about oh trust this and trust that mm -hmm. millennials and gen z's don't trust businesses like they used to they they their allegiance jumps from here to there and to that i say it's because businesses show that we can't trust them yeah um they they say one thing and then they do something else politicians are the exact same thing they say one thing and do something else and we have these these leaders that have come and like we oh these people are so good and then they've they've fallen from grace because we hold them to pedestals and what podcasting does is it allows you to create that level of trust because you get people get to know you over time so when your messages change they can see that evolution and see the reasoning why like if you listen to my my first podcast um it, it's horrible it's it's the worst <laughs> Um, if you listen to the first time I'm guesting on podcast, it's horrible. Uh, cause I didn't know anything. It took me like, I've been in this game a decade so far and I'm still learning. I'm constantly okay. learning. I'm constantly like I, every morning for a good two hours, I'm on different emails from podcasters. I get emails from different podcasters. So there's the podcasters who, who talk about podcasting the, as an industry, I'm on mm -hmm. their email list. I'm also on other podcasters that I admire their email to see how they're doing it so that I can gleam. Okay. You're doing this. Why are you doing this? And then it's like, okay, how can I take that and teach it to someone else? Mm -hmm. You know? So that's what, I do with podcasting and, and it creates a level of trust because you're seeing more authenticity from the business owners. They're being held more accountable. They're, they're, they're showing who they're, they truly are. So it allows you to see who you can work with. And if you're looking to get that trust, get that um, connection with your audience, your ideal audience, mm -hmm. a podcast is the greatest thing because you now have a radio station that you can talk about your business, talk about what you know as an expert or what okay. your business does, and you can share tips and tricks. Like you don't give away the whole, whole, whole bowl, you know, of goodies. You give one or two little tips here and there, but it's enough so that people can take actionable advice from it. Okay. And then they can see, oh, this actually works. Jeff knows what he's talking about when it comes to marketing. Phil knows what it he means when it comes to podcasting. So mm. now I can trust you with my money because I know what I'm going to get because already the free value you're giving me is worth it. I've implemented the free. It's worked. It's increased whatever the ROI or whatever the claim in it to be. Mm -hmm. And now I want to invest more because you obviously have the expertise that I want. And now they have yeah. that trust instead of saying, Hey, I know how to grow podcast. Well, how do you know how to grow podcasts? Well, I have five podcasts that I've grown myself personally to over thousand downloads. I've helped multiple entrepreneurs get two to 3000 downloads an episode and I get ranked in the Apple charts. You know, that's what I've done, but th that I, I can say that now I don't have any proof. You don't know if you can trust me, right? It's like, okay, maybe, but more and more people want trust. So it's like, okay, I have a show where I talk about podcasting. Okay. to show my level of expertise. I have a Facebook group 
on podcasting where I answer questions on the daily. I share advice. I put articles like that's what I'm giving away for free. I'm giving away my knowledge for free. It's my expertise that I charge yeah. for. You know, okay. that's what, that's what you use podcasting as a marketing. It's giving your way your knowledge because knowledge is free. They can find it on YouTube, but you want them to become part of your brand, become loyal to you. So you give them the knowledge that they need. And they're like, oh, he's giving it away for free or she's giving it away or this company's giving it away for free through a podcast or a YouTube channel, which is mm -hmm. just a video podcast if you really want. Mm -hmm. And they're sharing their knowledge for free. So if their knowledge that they're giving away is for free, what is their special sauce? And at the end of every podcast, you go, hey, book a call with me. You'll okay. start seeing people book a call with you because you're giving them the value. They're, they're trusting you with your podcast. Now, if you don't want to put in the work for a podcast, mm -hmm. because it is a lot of work, as you know, Jeff, you know, yeah. every, every couple of days, Phil recording dozens of episodes. And then like you mentioned before, getting the proper equipment, mind you, you don't need this proper equipment. Like the equipment that I have here is far superior to what every other podcaster needs. And the mm -hmm. only reason is, is because my brand needs it. Cause I'm a professional yeah. podcaster. So I need to have the professional podcaster, you know, the uh, XLR directional microphone, the 1080 P uh, webcam, the pod, mm -hmm. uh, the podcast, the roadcaster pro mixer so that I can take it and go, you know, I have this because it's required of me for my brand and my, for my business and what I like to make yeah. high quality sounding podcast. However, I know there's a podcaster who records his podcast in his car while he's driving and he gets wow. thousands of thousands of downloads because he's providing value to his audience. And he, his editor does some work to close the sound and he does do some, but it's bare bones. He's like, I just okay. want to tell you. So I know I have 10 minutes in my drive. I can give you a 10 minute lesson. So I just open my phone, hit the recording app and I just start talking and you hmm. be damned around the sound. This is how life is. And he gets thousands of downloads, which equates to authority being built because people mm -hmm. are going to his website to learn more about it because he's call to action is, hey, visit my website, visit my website, visit my website. It's only one call to action you need. You don't need thousands of call to action. Hey, follow me over here. Follow me. Over. No, people, unfortunately, you as mm -hmm. you learn as a marketer, as you learn as a business owner, people are dumb. <laughs> they don't want. Say, don't say that. Every time I say that, every time I say that, people get mad at me. I'll be like, People are stupid, you know, because I'm like, no, 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 no. For that, but <laughs> they're, they're, they're not stupid. People are intelligent. They're just dumb. And what I mean by what they're dumb is they don't understand your industry like you do. You yeah. think of everything you have as common knowledge because the people you're interacting with have it. So it's common knowledge for your industry. For podcasting, people don't understand podcasting. Mm hmm so they understand they they're they they are smart in consuming media they're very smart in consuming the media supporting media they're not they don't understand mm -hmm. how to support it because the only way they used to support media was what watching it on tv that's all mm -hmm. and that's how they got the nelson ratings they don't understand for a podcast we don't have nelson ratings we don't have visible stats so they don't know they don't know how to move from listening consuming you to supporting you so by having only one simple call to action, you're directing your listener who is dumb because they don't understand how to go from consuming to supporting. So what mm -hmm. you do is in a simple call to action, you clarify. It's like, hey, go to my website. Well, I know how to go to a website. I go to the website. Cool. I'm there. I'm supporting you. Mm -hmm. So you, you give them the clear action that you want them to take. You don't okay. tell them to follow me on social media or you, if you do, you choose one social media. Hey, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Every episode you just say, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. That's your one call yeah. to action. And that's going to move people to your Instagram, which then you now have something that you can market to them. You can sell them your business. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing consulting, if you're selling, you know, home goods, whatever it is, your podcast yeah. can move your audience there and they move there. Then, you know, you're getting engagement on the post, which means people are potentially buying your product. Okay. You have to, podcasting is technically an ad that's running 24 seven for whatever 
you want to post people to or direct people to. You just okay. have to decide where you want to direct them to. And then the episode is just sharing knowledge or sharing entertainment. Either you're entertaining people with facts about your business in an entertaining way, or you're educating people like you are, Jeff, and I do on my show, where we interview experts who have more knowledge in a certain area of our mm. general niche, and that can share it to the audience for free, allowing our audience to become even better, more equipped, and find the tool that will work for them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, I, a lot of people look at podcasting as this big radio media type of giant. And they say, well, I need to do that. And like you said earlier, um, you know, a lot of people are doing it and they're not making it overcomplicated and getting the response because they're authentic. Where a company, when it, when you do it and it's too polished, people don't believe it because it sounds so much like a commercial. <laughs> and a commercial, you know, is trying to sell you something. So they know you're trying to manipulate or persuade them in a certain way. So, you know, I, I've consulted with bigger brands that have been, you know, frustrated because they spend a lot of money on a, a lot of this media and they're spending all this media money. And they're like, well, this guy did it on his iPhone and he's getting all this attention. How? And it's because, well, he's just being himself. He's mm -hmm. very authentic. People resonate with what he's saying, but they're looking at you as a brand. And like you said before, they're, you know, this generation isn't like, you know, my generation. I'm a little older. We used to go by the do what I say, not what I do philosophy. Mm -hmm. This generation is more like, I'm going to do what you do, what you do, do what I see. I don't really care what you say, you know, so they look at these brands and they say, okay, well, you say that you're going to do this, this, and this, but I've seen in, in different occasions, this not be the case, or you not honoring your word. Um, mm -hmm. um, and so this person here, they don't have a reason to lie to me, you know, even though a lot of social media, we see a lot of false advertisement in of person, course. but you feel as if this person is being genuine, they have no reason to lie to me. And a lot of the podcasters, you you listen to them, you say, okay, this person took time out of their day to share. They have no reason to lie to me. They have no reason to, to give me bad information. This is something that they're passionate about, which a corporation is hard for a bigger organization to show passion because it's a lot of moving parts, a lot of people where a person in a podcast can show that passion because it's them and they're talking about what they love to talk about. So it's 100% true. It's we are the, because of the, the coldness that we've saw in like the nineties and the early two thousands, how corporations really don't, and they continue to show us, they don't care about the everyday people. We hear about organizations, massive companies trying to stop unions from forming so that the people can have like you know pee breaks you know not pee in bottles or whatever it is yeah but they're saying hey we want to help help our workers and then you're doing or help everyday citizens i'm like yeah but you're not helping your biz your own employees how can you whereas you have someone like gary v who comes out and he's like here's all your here's everything you need to know i'm giving you what i know what we're doing at my company and most mm -hmm. people don't know that he has a multi-million dollar billion dollar company behind him helping him become the face. He, yes, he built it himself. It was his hard work. But when he got to a certain point, he was like, I'm paying people to do it. And that's all yeah. it is. He's still being authentic. He's saying, hey, when you're starting out, you need to grind. But you're going to get to a point where you don't have to grind anymore and you don't have to hustle. Mm -hmm. Podcasting is something that allows you to do it. I have one client and I, I do podcast consulting and production. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one client. All he does is I send him an email on the first of every month. Hey, I need episodes. Usually by the seventh of that month, nearly a week later, I have four episodes. He just records them, sends it to me. I polish them up. I make sure they sound nice. I put the intro, the outro, upload them, send him the transcript because he has a team and he gives the transcript to his team and they just go ham on it. And he does all the social media. All he needs me is to host and do the back end stuff. He's like, you're my tech dude. I'm like, okay. okay. 
Dude, I have no problem with that. It takes me two minutes to do it. I'm okay. I charge him a, a ridiculous amount of money, um, but he's okay with it because it's generating like just in the, since we launched, he he's averaging at least 3000 downloads an episode. Okay. For his podcast and they're 15 minute episodes. And he has generated over, he's probably now generated over seven figures from the podcast in his funnel. Wow. And he, all he does, he gives the podcast away for free. He go and it's it's the it's the simplest funnel. He goes his book, which is his, mm-hmm. which is a five buck book, right? Mm-hmm. That distills some of his knowledge. The, then it goes next next after they buy the book, they get the the audio book, and mm-hmm. then it's the funnel. Uh, then it's the uh, it's the podcast right after that. So once they they are like, oh well, I'm already used to listening to his voice. Let's listen to the podcast, and then from the podcast, it goes to his high ticket. Uh, his high ticket products and services, but that podcast, if you're not ready to go to the high ticket, the podcast gives you the authority because you're listening to this podcast. You've read the book. Mm -hmm. You're, you're hearing his voice constantly and saying, Hey, go to my website, go to my website, go to my website. At the end of the episode, it's go to my website. Check me out on my website. Check me out on my website. You go to the website. You're going to end up buying the stuff going to end up moving because you, you've, gain the trust and you've learned from him and how to do the steps necessary to afford his next level. Okay. And it's, it's, it's that simple. That's what your podcast can do. If you don't want to do the podcast, you go find a local podcast in your area and you'll mm-hmm. sponsor them. They'll take like a hundred bucks a month. Like it's, re- it's way cheaper than Facebook ads because at hundred mm-hmm. bucks they can take, and then they can put it into their, the quality of their podcast and other podcasts is going up, but that they put an ad every episode, they have an ad for you. And this will be the last thing before we sign off. Cause I know you like to keep them tight. Um, mm-hmm. But if you think about it, a, a release just got out, out of the uh, population of the U S that listen to podcast, mm-hmm. 97% of them mm-hmm. have taken action on ads. They hear on podcasts Mm. so imagine if you go to an individual podcast that's in your Mm -hmm. local area your mom and pop restaurant or your small business a hardware store something like that and you find a podcast that talks to your ideal audience you know it's a food loving podcast hey you're a restaurant might as well sponsor this podcast or it's a it's a home depot type uh, reno podcast and you're a hardware store give them a Give them a hundred bucks. Now they're reading your ad at the beginning, middle or end of the podcast, wherever you guys decide. Okay. And they're giving your trust. The host is getting, giving their trust that they built up to their audience with their audience saying, Mm -hmm. Hey, you should check out this restaurant. You should check out this business because X, Y, and Z, they can help you. And now, now the listeners are going to be like, Oh, this is a restaurant. I know this is a hardware store. I know they're supporting a local podcaster that's awesome now now you're you're getting the loyalty that's already been built transferred over to you yeah yeah and it's it's insane because that you pay that 100 dollars for that one month that ad is in there forever so the cost of that ad drops dramatically over time yeah because if you say yeah. One client is worth $100. If that podcast brings you one client, it covers the cost. Now it's starting to pay you for every additional client that comes in. Now now you're getting paid to advertise. Yeah. And the beautiful thing is, it it goes back to the best form of growing your business, and that's word of mouth. Yep. Because when you're advertising in podcasts, a lot of times it's not the same as advertising on the radio. You know, advertising on the radio, it starts with a commercial break and then they have a break. But a podcast advertisement can be as simple as somebody just mentioning, hey, the other day I went to this restaurant and they had the most amazing food. That's your commercial. It doesn't have to be a commercial per se. It's a yeah, what you, you can call, say, you know, a mention. Yeah. Like, like, like taking your restaurant example, I'll do, yeah. So I went to the local pizza joint by my street, Pizza Charlevoix. We'll say, um, went in, had one of the greatest pizza. I was worried about going there because they're a brand new place, right? So I went in, tried their pizza. Their meat lover pizza is amazing, and yeah. because it was so good, 
I, I talk to them and they're like, I'm like, hey, I run a podcast. I would love to send more people your way because this food is amazing. Would you be interested in sponsoring? Right there, you're saying, look, I went and got them. They didn't come to me. This is the ad. Mm -hmm. I went, tried their food. You try and be honest, obviously, because that's what we want. I tried their food or I attempted something. They reached out to me. I wanted to make sure. Like you show the synergy working with it. Like if you're, you're a restaurant reaching out to a podcaster that has mm -hmm. a food podcast, invite them in to ver like taste their food and see if they like it and go, hey, if you liked it, we would love to sponsor your podcast. Now you're going, the guy's like, well, I got this free meal. Okay, cool. If you're a podcaster, reach out, go, hey, I would love, I if you it's a restaurant or a business that you go to, hey, I love your business. I want mm -hmm. to support your business by, would you be interested in po partnering with me? We can do some sort of, you know, a promotion to see whether or not it's worth your while to put money into it or, you know, a promo code or something that you can work into so that there is no exchange of money. It's a more of a bartering, but there's mm -hmm. an ROI. I, as a podcaster, can now say I have a sponsor. So when I go to other businesses in the future, I can say, hey, I've already been sponsored. So I have my authority is lifted. But the business now can go, is it worthwhile to put money into sponsoring a podcast? So I give them a 15% discount code. I get three orders. You know what? That's worth 150 bucks to me. I'm willing to send 50 bucks, 100 bucks his way or their way. Boom. Yeah, now you have a you have ad spend for near zero dollars that's bringing you money over time. You even can help promote the podcast by having their a QR code going, hey, support our podcast or support the, or the podcast we support, you know, listen to the podcast we support in your store. Yeah. And then people are going to be like, oh, you have a podcast because podcasts are going to be are the next generation of radio. They're the next generation of media. YouTube channels are the next next tv our kids are growing yeah. up with youtube just like i was gr i grew up with tv youtube's the next and then the next one's going to be vr and so forth and so forth what mm -hmm. you have to look for as a marketer as a business owner is looking at how can i work with the next generation of uh media so that yeah. i can benefit that's all it is yeah and with the the big cash out that you know some of the podcasts now are getting everybody's starting to get excited about it oh well i want to be like rogan because he got this million you know multi-million dollar deal and so forth so now people are looking at it as it's the new big thing let's mm -hmm. get on now so there's only you know. actively so there's on uh, apple podcasts there's four million podcasts mm -hmm. listed Active podcast is just under 200,000 active podcasts. Really? That means an active podcast is a podcast that has released an episode within the last month. Wow. So if you think about it, like, yeah, there's 4 million podcasts on Apple. 97% of them have not updated within the last month. Mm. Probably even less than nine, like even more than 97. It's like 99 because it's like 200,000 active podcasts. And they, they say there was a recent article that's saying that podcasting is dead. It's dying. It's not. It's the the understanding of how hard podcasting is because it's not an easy thing to record episodes every mm. week or every couple of days recording 10 episodes. Like I record like five episodes in a day. Okay. two days a week so like today and tomorrow wednesdays and thursdays are my recording days i have five episodes today five episodes tomorrow that i'm recording for my four podcasts okay so that i have episodes in the can so that they can release and i don't have to worry about it so mm -hmm. i'm ahead of time but there's still a lot like if you don't know there's a lot of bags under these eyes and it's, it's staying up <laughs> late editing my podcast, working on podcasts and all that. It's a lot of work at the beginning, but once you get your system in place, it's one that just takes off. So if you're looking to start a podcast, I would love to help you. If you're looking to sponsor a podcast, I would love to help you learn how to sponsor a podcast and get the win, win, win for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, that's just me. Yeah. Tell them, Phil, how they can um, work with you because you know, it is a lot of work. I will tell everybody. It's a lot. The, this is the fun part, really, the talking. That's the fun part. But yeah, yeah all the other stuff around it, it, it's a lot of other things you have to do to make sure that you're successful with it. So tell them how they can work with you. Uh, I do recommend if you are podcasting, eventually, like you say, with Gary Vee and others, 
you'll have to build out a team. Yeah. Um, so, you know, let them know how they can get in touch with you. So here, here's the thing. I offer 15 minute consults for free for anybody. If okay. you're interested in learning something and seeing if podcasting is for you, simply visit philbetterinc.com slash consult. That's Phil, P-H-I-L. B E T P H I L B E T T E R I N C dot com slash consult. Mm-hmm. Book your 15 minutes. I will be personally there because it's B. I don't have a team offering this um yet. Um but yeah, I will sit down. I will you can ask me all the questions you have for podcasting. I will gladly tell you everything because I I I only want to work with people who want to pay me. That's simply yeah. it. If you just want free information, I'll gladly give it to you because you can find it on YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. But if you want to work with someone that will actually hold your hand, get you to the goals that you want, then I'm, uh, I, I'd am i be more than happy to work with you. But if you just want a free advice on how podcasting can help you and a strategy behind it, feelbetterinc.com slash consult. Uh, let's get you uh, let's get you start podcasting. Yes. And also you can if you want the free information, you just listen to his podcast. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, he'll share. pretty much. Yeah. And if you want to listen to my podcast, and I'm going against my number one rule for call to action. So my call to action is visit philbetterinc.com slash consult to see if podcasting is for you and work, see if we can work together. If you want to, before you even do that, and you want to learn about what podcasting is and hear from podcasters, uh, invest in yourself pod.com has the links to all my podcasts. So just visit there. Yes. Well, thanks, Phil, for coming and sharing just a tip of the iceberg of podcasting, because there is a a lot more involved. I mean, you're looking at, you know, pre-planning, actually doing the show, post-production, and you got promotion, distribution. There's a lot of aspects. So I would encourage everyone to at least get the 15-minute call to see what is involved and how you can do it, because every one of you can be a star podcaster. I mean, you have a story to tell and only you can tell it the way you can tell it. But don't, you know, just think that it's a pick up the mic and just talk. But it's not as difficult as you have to have a full blown media company pushing you either. So, you know, have at least a call, find out if it's worth it uh, for you or how you can do it. And then, hey, start talking. I'm sure the guy that can drive down the street and do a podcast if he can do that with the road rage and everything else in the background, <laughs> you can do it too. So cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming on the marketing strategy session. Uh, I know you've learned a lot. And um, if you ever want to get in contact with Phil, definitely go to uh, feelbetterinc.com. If you want to get in contact with me, you can definitely go to marketingstrategysession.com. Um, I'm Mr. Marketology, your marketing strategist, and uh, I'll see you on the next podcast.